this is a this is an exciting new project and and again i'll uh put nazim and, and barbara and uh, and heather uh just on notice here um if you want to add anything at the end uh would love to especially nazim and uh and and barb um maybe just a, a minute or two on on what folks should be expecting to hear from you uh as you roll out your your components of this project so again, started, um, this is actually Nature Smart Climate Solutions Fund project. Started this conversation back in March of 2021. Sorry, I got March 2020 there. Um, so there was a lot of interest, uh, say uh, Nature Conservancy Canada was one, the Canadian Wildlife Federation again, really interested in having a national grassland inventory. And of course we don't have one at this point. So it's difficult to, you know, to assess, you know, the full extent of our grasslands and more importantly, the loss of those grasslands. We know that, you know, we are losing, you know, native grassland at, at, at a fairly alarming rate. And, and uh, I think the last numbers we had, even for Ontario, is that we were losing, you know, 300,000 acres a year of, of uh, stored forage and pasture land. So, um, having a, a really clear picture of that is is something that we that we were seeking that a lot of people uh, needed to have. So uh, we submitted a proposal back in May May first, and again, Nature Serve Canada and ABMI were part of that process. Uh, Vresco had supported us in that development, CWF and and Nature Conservancy Canada, and others, Ducks and and Canadian Cattlemen's Association were were identified as contributors as well. So. Uh, thanks for that for that joint effort. So what we want to do, there's eight different uh, objectives for for this project. We want to take a look at at what we have currently uh, for grassland inventories in Canada. And I think as we move across the country, you know, individual provinces have varying levels of of detail within within their grasslands. And we know Saskatchewan and Manitoba have made some significant advancements over the last couple of years. Ontario has an inventory that, you know, struggles maybe between identifying between pasture and, and stored forage land. So it's hard to get that classification just right and, and track uh, growth or, or loss of those acres. So that's our first step. And that's something that Nazim is currently working on to understand what the current state of grasslands is across the country. The second one is, uh, is, is largely falling to what Barb is doing right now is understanding what it is we need a, 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 an inventory to, to, to achieve on behalf of the Canadian forage sector and what that means province by province. Because um, that, uh, you know, obviously different goals and, and goals and objectives is move across the country. So understanding what the needs and wants would be from a national inventory is what we're seeking to do right now so that we can build a longer term work plan on, on how to build how to build this beast. I should say too, I meant to say right off the hop, you know, the, the start of this conversation um, or the, I guess, credit for the birth of this idea really goes to, to Bill Houston and, and Terry Kowalchuk. Uh, I think it was like February, 2020 bill uh, where you and Terry and I had got together and there was some, you know, trying to understand what kind of loss we were currently seeing in the Canadian forage sector. And we recognize that you know, the best we had was the, the census of, of agriculture report. And, and we just didn't feel that that was detailed enough. And it certainly didn't, not functional enough uh, to allow us to really track the loss of grasslands across Canada. So again, hats off to, to Bill and Terry and, and folks at Saskatchewan Forage Council that, that really pushed us to, to move on this one. So number three there, that's where your action plan comes down. And that's what the, the results of what Barb and Nazim are currently doing. Uh, is going to where that's going to end land us with our go forward action plan. So then, you know, as we roll into to next uh, to the next fiscal, that's when we start to we're gonna we're gonna have a what we heard host a what we heard uh, workshop here in in the third week of third week of April. I think correct me if I'm wrong, Melissa. We're looking at April 21. To, to move that through, that's a tentative date. So you'll be seeing that invite come shortly. Um, so yeah, that, that's where we will present our the early findings and, and what we're gonna seek to accomplish over the next two years. Also, uh, Don uh, from, from NatureServe Canada is working on the uh, grassland classification system. This is another challenge that was identified is that we do not 
have a, a, a consistent classification across the country, i.e. what we call grassland, be it native or tame or pasture or stored forage, which means that it's hard to transfer these, these, uh, in, these provincial inventories across provincial borders. Uh, so that's what Don is, is seeking to do is, is to create that classification system so we can all be using the same language uh, as, as we go out to do our ground truthing uh, to, to integrate with our satellite imagery. Task number six there, um, I mentioned, you know, the work done in Saskatchewan and Manitoba over the last several years, been a lot of work. And I think Nazim has been a driving force in this uh, and, and Bea, folks like Bea and, and Erica out of the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture have, have, have led this within their provinces uh, to build these, these provincial inventories. And requirement there is to take that satellite imagery that Nazim is gonna kind of present to us and, and do the ground truthing so that we can train those algorithms so that when we get a picture, we know exactly what's underfoot and help us to, to really uh, fine tune those inventories. So that'll be happening out this summer. And uh, Heather, I'll invite you to talk a little bit about the training that you're putting together to support that. You know, the next couple objectives uh, here are, are to get this thing rolled out. Once we, once we know what we need from a tech development perspective, and, what we need and the work bringing in the work we're doing with ground truthing and starting to knit these in provincial inventories together you know we'll have this tool and then we'll, we'll have to be doing some education and training on on the use of the tool you know i also should note uh, folks like andy davidson out of the ag camera shop in ottawa and, and uh is dan ferguson it's dan his last name escapes me, but the team there in Ottawa, you know, they're really, really interested in, in this and how they can support its integration. We've got a postdoc coming on through their shop to help us to, to understand how we start to knit some of these inventories together. The last one here is really to, to keep people in the tent. And so, uh, again, based on what comes out of Barb's research and on what the wants and needs are, you know, that will change over time. And, you know, the ultimate result of a grassland inventory like this is our ability to track change and understand where we're losing grasslands and why. And Graham Gilchrist had posed the question earlier, will the grassland inventory identify those lands at greatest risk? Well, perhaps, and, and Azim, I invite you to comment on this, perhaps not directly, but once we do have a consistent inventory, then we can start to look at that and pinpoint those areas of most rapid loss in Canada, which allows us to then have a more in-depth conversation around programs or policies that may be, that need to be enacted in order to stem said loss. Just a quick note on the budget, uh, just over a million dollars over, over three years. Um, this year one total, uh, it, it has been reduced down to uh, 200 uh, just because of fiscal year constraints. We weren't able to, to push uh, to get those dollars used effectively. So we had to reprofile some of that. So the current work is mentioned, uh, and, and Barb and Nazim, I'll invite you to, to comment, and, and Heather as well. You can see Don uh, uh, faber Langdion wasn't able to be with us today from Nature Surf Canada, but he's working on that grassland classification system. And, and so Heather is building a, a training module to help us with the ground truthing this summer in Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Um, Barb's working on stakeholder engagement, and and uh, Nazim is working on the technology piece. So, you know, I talked about these new processes. Again, it's, a, it's, it's an exciting project, lots of new uh, and innovative models and methodologies and, 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 and stakeholders that we're bringing together um, for the project, really trying to maintain that open tent concept here. All are welcome uh, to, to participate and, and contribute. Uh, and uh, keeping this network pulled, you know, held tightly together over the coming years is, is also a, a core goal of the project. So, Barb, maybe just a word on what you're doing, then we'll roll to Nazim and finish off with Heather. Okay, thanks very much. So where I'm coming from is that to understand those risks and the risk to losses, you really have to have a handle on the underlying policy um, across jurisdictions. So the first step that I'm involved with here is uh, going to be interviewing some folks. So some of you have been in contact with... Um, posing some questions about what you see as sort of the policy landscape uh, related to, to grasslands, grasslands management, um, and some of those risks to loss. So 
um, that will be coming in the next month and we'll be reporting back on that, as Cedric mentioned, that workshop in April. Nancy? Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, you've said everything. Um, but the, the, the point is, I would say, that, and the opportunity, I would say, and the challenge at the same time is to, 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 to map nationwide grasslands with the highest spatial resolution. And not just mapping with highest spatial resolution, but also provide reasonable accuracy. We are aiming above 90% prediction accuracy. Um, adding to this also understanding the changes that happen to the grasslands. So meaning that we will need to do an annual or within the year kind of land cover or grassland change mapping approach. So now we are involved, I mean, in the technical side, we are, we are involved in two pieces. One is the action plan for the whole project, understanding the necessary steps to achieve the national native or the national grassland inventory, that's first. But also we are starting now uh, building some, I would say, um, technical pipeline uh, to see how accurate and how achievable uh, mapping with big data. And when you look at using remote sensing, you think about this kind of satellite imagery that you see from Google Earth. But actually, these are very challenging because we would like to provide some, I would say, harmony to the whole landscape. We will be mapping between the mid of July to, let's say, the mid of August. But within that, there are some, say, climatic conditions, for example, cloud coverage or some wildfire or some flooding. We're trying to maneuver to minimize uh, the number of, um, I would say, remote sensing data limitations and provide another source of data, which is, for example, radar data, which is, this is the one new step we are actually doing right now. And successfully, we just finished mapping uh, Manitoba with 12 million hectares with a, a, space, a spatial resolution of 10 meters. And we achieved the 90% and above overall prediction accuracy using AI-based approaches. But what we would like to do even more is to understand the changes, the changes that happen within the year, you know, with the landscape, with, with, the, with the grassland, would say the biomass changes within the year itself, how the drought can affect the changes, for example, I would say, or the question uh, being asked by uh, Graham, I think, about the, the grassland uh, uh, conversion or a sort of rest conversion index. That's also something can be done, but first we need to have the kind of national uh, grassland inventory, I would say the multi-temporal uh, grassland inventory. I believe also Barb need to comment on the uh, risk conversion uh, index. So I think that was a great question and uh, I'm glad you asked it. We were just talking about this yesterday. We're, we're in a really great situation here because we, as we start out, we're doing both that kind of risk analysis and the mapping. And so we're in a position to put those two things together. If you can envision that as a product um, that we would be able to produce. And it, it's great if people bring these ideas forward as we start the work planning for this, uh, we, we can integrate these things into, into some, I think some really nice information. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Barb. And, and also adding to what Barb just said, it's also understanding the source of the conversion itself. Is it a conversion because of uh, human activity or a conversion because climatic conditions? We are witnessing longer droughts and severe droughts, especially in the prairie. Is it because of that? And what is the long-term effect to the, the, the grassland or the native grasslands? Yeah, but feel free to, to, if you have a question now or you can follow up with us in emails or uh, uh, via Cedric. Yeah, just before we move to, to Heather, because it, it goes to May Elsinger's question here. Uh, the answer is yes, May. Uh, we did build in some funding for ground truthing in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Uh, so we will be making, uh, making that available to, to support uh, that effort uh, to, to inform those, both those Saskatchewan and Manitoba inventory. So Heather, a comment uh, from you on the work that you're doing to, to provide that, um, some training for those folks. Okay, yeah, sure. Thanks, Cedric. Um, 
I'm looking at the the issue of how do we get out on the ground um, with uh, to capture the extensive amount of data that's required to uh, do machine learning and to end up with these these truthful <laughs> high level answers that we that we need on a very large scale. <clears throat> but uh, so a few of the issues that we're dealing with is the fact that grasses are some of the most difficult thing to identify if you're looking at the full spectrum of native species. Um, there are very few uh, students these days that actually are, if we're looking for summer staff to do this sort of work, there's very few students who actually study plant taxonomy or plant morphology. Um, to actually work with the plant is, is becoming a less and less common thing. So uh, I've sort of tasked, been tasked with the, how do, we, how do we get people up to speed and how can we parse this out in such a way that we can actually do these in at the scale that we need it done. So we're just working on a, on a training guide, what are the things we need them to know and how can we parse this out? And because it is a, a, a dichotomy basically of, is this native or is this non-native, is this tame? So we can use that to actually minimize the amount of training that they need um, and, this, and sort of hone in on the skill that will get us the answers that we need. So yeah, so we're, we're designing that and, and um, working on have that ready uh, very soon. Four. I'll say it, having it ready for <laughs> comment from all sorts of people. So, <clears throat> yeah. So we, we recognize, you know, the the scope of 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 the work that needs to be done, May, and and uh, the need to deploy people in in short order. So that's why we've uh, we've made this a priority to provide some of that training so people can hit the ground running this summer. <clears throat> 